Good afternoon. It's lovely to see you all, even though I can't see you. But thank you for joining us for our noon time reflection. And uh, hi to everybody from Greystones Presbyterian. Whatever you're doing here live, or whatever you're doing maybe later on when you listen to this, or even when you listen to it next week, um, I hope you're well. But from wherever you are, and wherever in the world you may be, thank you for joining us again today. We're continuing to look at some of our Psalms. Today we're looking at Psalm 133. If you've got a Bible, that would be helpful for you. won't do me any good at all, but it will be great for you. Psalm 133. It's another one of the Songs of Ascents. Uh, remember we talked before about what the Songs of Ascents were? Um, three times uh, a year. There were three, there were three different festivals that the, that the Jews would go to Jerusalem for. And on their way, they would sing these collection of songs, the Songs of Ascent. A bit like we would sing Christmas carols at Christmas, but for these special events, they would they would sing these songs of ascent as they are ascending towards God, towards Jerusalem, towards uh, the temple, um, to be in His presence. So it's a beautiful poem. Um, so let's read it together if you've got it. Psalm one hundred and thirty-three. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Three short verses, and yet it's a beautiful, beautiful little song that says so much. So it's a song, it's about, it's about the family unity of God's people. And as the Israelites were heading towards Jerusalem, didn't matter what tribe they came from, or what job they did, or how much money they had in the bank, or what their interest was, it didn't matter, all these diverse people were coming to Jerusalem with the single aim of being in God's presence and worshipping him. This was God's family coming to God's place um, to worship. So this is a poem about that and about the unity of that. No matter what a person's background may be, uh, whatever experience they would have had, um, they come unified. And David, the psalmist, said this is a good thing, this is a pleasant thing, when people come together in unity with this one goal, this one purpose. They're God's family. Of course, we all have our own families. And during this time of lockdown, many families have been... Um, have been, uh, what's the word, isolated from each other. Um, some people are here, some people are there. Some people have found it very frustrating that they can't be with those that they love. And as I've mentioned before, our son and uh, grandson are in England and we're very frustrated we haven't been able to be there and see the baby that is growing quickly. And we want to hold him and be with him, but we can't. I know there are many families like that. Um, but for us here in Greystones, we've been very blessed, John and I, because we've had our two daughters, Bethany and Deborah, who are sitting in the room here um, with us for all these weeks, and uh, they've put up with us really well. But for us, it has been a gift. It has been a blessing. For some families to be together, it can be stressful, um, because no one's perfect. We're all broken people. Um, but for us, it hasn't been like that. It has been a blessing. The sad thing is, that they're heading back up to Belfast on Monday, or maybe Tuesday, or maybe <laughs> Wednesday, or maybe the week out. No, they're going next week because they've got people that they need to see. And uh, so we'll miss them for the afternoon, and then they'll be great again on Tuesday. But it'll be hard to see them go. But Bethany and Deborah have been here, but also their dog, Nella. Nella. Nella, <laughs> Nella is asleep. The Nella, come on over here. Nella, come on. Nella is, uh, is asleep in the sun. But she's coming over. So we've never had a dog, but our daughters. Oh, are you going to bring the dog? No, you're going to hold it. Oh, just you, dear. No. Go on. Look, this this is my lovely daughter Deborah, and this is Nala. Nala is a cross between a beagle and a rottweiler. No, a beagle and a lurcher, and she's absolutely beautiful and so gentle. So we didn't know her until a few months ago, and uh, yeah, just before Christmas, the girls got her. She is a rescue dog. A rescue dog. So she was 18 months old whenever we got her, is that right? She is old. She, she is, is nine. Oh, she's 18 months old 
today, or no, this time. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a party. No. But Nella, thank you very much. Now let's just say bye to everybody, Nella. Nella, Nella's just so beautiful. Uh, you didn't expect that today, did you? So Nella is now part of our family, and uh, it's just great. She loves to play. She loves to chase things and bring them back. Um, she's not so keen on walking, uh, but she's always very keen if you're eating something. Um, but she's beautiful. She's so good, so easy. But Nella is part of our family, and she's a rescue dog. And you know, when you think about God's family, isn't that who we are? We have all been rescued and brought into God's family. Those of us who are going astray, those of us who are lost, those of us who are broken, that describes all of us. And those of us who have come into God's family um, have been rescued, rescued by Jesus. We're not a part of his family. We have his DNA. It can't be changed. And we're bonded by the blood of Jesus. He has brought us. He has given his life for us. So we're part of this amazing family. This is the strongest family of all. Yeah, we're quite diverse. You know, they've got that old saying that uh, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. And that's no more true than in the church. Families can have weird people in them. Churches can have weird people in them. But you know the weirdest of all? It's me and it's you. We're all kind of weird, but that's fine. We're all different. But in God's family, we are one. And just like the Jews come into Jerusalem, we all come because of, because of our Lord, because of God. We come to be in his presence and we come to worship him. When we're in his family all of our lives, everything we do, from the work that we do to the worship we offer on a Sunday, everything is an act of worship for him. We pray to our God. He's the one that fills us with the Spirit. He's the one that leads us every step of the way. We are his. All different. I was nearly going to sing a song, but I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen Dream Girls. Uh, it's more than you, it's more than you <laughs> and it's more than me. No matter what we are, we are a family. And that's us. It's not just about me or you, it's more than that. It's about this family. Not just a family here in Greystones, but a worldwide family. God is building his church. God is building his kingdom. And unity is so important. And isn't that what, isn't that what Jesus asked for? Do you recognize these words that Paul wrote? In Christ, there is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither slave nor free. There is, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Or think about these words, this prayer that Jesus prayed for you. In John chapter 17, just before he died, he prayed for himself, he prayed for his disciples, and he prayed for those yet to come. That is you watching this today. Listen to these words. This is Jesus' prayer for you. My prayer is not for them alone. That is the disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them, all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you loved me. Jesus wants us to have this family unity. Unity does not mean uniformity. We're all very different. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses. We all like different things. Our theology may not be exactly the same, but he wants us to be one. He wants us to be unified in him, for him, because of him. This is what he longs for. This is what he prays for, for you to be part of his family and to be one with the rest of the family. But John says this very, I'm not sure of the word, this wonderful verse in 1 John, in his first letter, chapter three. We know that we have passed from death to life because we, what would you put in there? 
We know we've passed from death to life because we, because we go to church. Mm, that's not what he says. We know we've passed from death to life because we don't go to the movies or the cinema or the theater or swear or whatever it might be. No, he says, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters. And anyone who does not love remains in death. Yeah, that's quite sobering, that, isn't it? We know that we have passed from here to there. How do you know you're a Christian? How do you know you're part of God's family? You know whenever you love the family that he's brought you into. We've been rescued. We've been blessed. And we're part of his family because of the blood of Jesus that was shed for you. And then he uses these two beautiful pictures, verse two. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the color of his robes. Just a picture of oil, which was used. Generally, oil is a picture of, of joy in the Bible. But this oil being placed on Aaron, who was a priest, the first high priest of the Jews, um, part of that Levite uh, tribe. But it's, it's sanctifying him. This is what, this oil, this was special oil. If you read about it in Exodus chapter 20, I think, um, God told Moses exactly how to make this oil. It was like a beautiful fragrance, like making perfume today. And we know how intense and sophisticated that is. This oil was the same. It had a special recipe. And it was only to be used to um, sanctify the, the tent of meeting and sanctify the priests. They were the only ones that could be used for this oil. Anybody trying to um, make up this recipe was banned. They were in big trouble. It was only a special fragrance, a special oil um, for the tent of meeting and for priests. And the picture here is the oil, not just a little dip dab of oil, but been running down Aaron's head and his beard and onto his robes giving off wonderful fragrance. This is a God of abundance. And in a sense, do you remember when the fragrance, the, the perfume was put on Jesus' feet? I mean, it just filled the room. And what the psalmist is saying, what David is saying is whenever we have unity, whenever we love each other, it is like this fragrant oil that is just cascading around the world. Jesus said, people will know you're my disciples if you love one another that is unity to love to be one and that's what is the image of the fragrance of this oil just going out into a world that is that needs this fragrance that is you and then the second image verse three it is as if the dew of hermon were falling on mount zion for there the lord bestows his blessing even life forevermore the dew on mount hermon Hermon was a long way away from Jerusalem. It was way up north. And yet it was, it was known for its lushness. Even in summer, it was green. A bit like Ireland. Why is Ireland so green? It is so wet, usually, but it has been so dry. But Hermon was the same. And the dew of Hermon, the picture here is, is of the dew, the fragrance of Hermon cascading down and making even Jerusalem, Zion, uh, fertile. That is the picture of unity. This is the blessing of unity. This is the refreshing dew. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. This is unity. This is blessing. This is life. So look at your family today. Remember there are some families who are not in harmony, who are a little bit disjointed. That's sad, isn't it? We need to work to fix that. That's not always easy. But in the church, in God's family, it is even more important that we love one another, that there is a oneness, that there is unity. Not because of us, but because we look to him. This is what Jesus wants. This is what he calls us to be. This is what he has prayed for, for you. And David says, this is good. This is pleasant. This is life-giving to all the world. Psalm 133, three little verses. Super, isn't it? 
Anyway, we're going to pray. And we're going to pray for families. And we're going to pray for God's family, the church. And we're going to pray just for our world. And again, we'll leave a little space. And towards the end, we're going to pray for those who um, are beginning to return to work. As the world creaks into some kind of normality. Um, and that's hard to do. So let us, let us join together to pray. That's all. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for family. It is just such a beautiful word, family. We are a family. Father, we pray that for all the families in this world, that you would be the oil of, of unity, of healing, of fruitfulness, of love. Father, if there are families um, who are feeling the stress of being together or the stress of not being together, Father, we pray, we pray peace and healing for them. Let your Spirit, Lord, do his work. And Father, we pray for the family of your church. Many in your family I know here in Greystone, Lord, just long to be together again, to see each other, to worship together, to hold each other, all these very precious things, Lord. And we pray that very soon, your family, uh, in your church, Lord, wherever we are in the world, that your family could very soon be reunited. Father, let nothing divide us, not a virus, not jealousy, not gossip, not our own brokenness, not our own frailties. Father, forgive us whenever we let people down. Forgive us, Lord, when we do something to upset people. Father, make us one. That is what Jesus prayed for, Lord, and we pray too. He wanted your church to be united as you and he were united. Father, he prayed for that over and over again, and we pray for it too. Let your church wherever in the world they may be, be one. Father, we have one purpose. We're given life by you. We want to live for you. And we want to be with you forever. Lord, that's what that psalm says. The blessing comes um, and the eternal life that you give us. Life beyond this moment, but life for all eternity. And that's what we pray, Lord, for your church. So let's take this moment's quietness, this moment's silence, to bring to him the things we'd like to say, let's do that at this time. Father, we thank you for hearing us. And Lord, we particularly want to pray for those who are beginning to return to work. Father, we pray that those who are gradually returning, um, I pray, Lord, that you would give them the confidence to step out again into the world of work and keep them safe. Lord, it's not easy trying to crank up the wheels again. Father, something strange about that. But we pray for those who are putting their toe and returning to work. Father, that you would be with them. Give them the, the grace to be able to do that, Lord, and to ease back into that. Father, we pray for those who oversee workplace safety, and we ask, Lord, that you would help them to find flexible and creative ways of ensuring that staff are kept safe on the return to the places of their employment. Father, let it be a happy reunion of people. Make it a safe reunion of people. Father, thank you for the gift of work. We know it is a gift, Lord, and we pray that as each one returns, Lord, that it will be a blessing to them. So, Father, we come again to you, our God, the one 
who binds us together. And we come in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, you would have heard Nala, um, our wonderful Nala, uh, barking. She never normally barks. The only time she barks is if she sees um, a dog walking past. Or sometimes across the road there is a little dog who sometimes escapes. And it's almost like a motherly concern. And uh, she's saying, look what's happening. Someone help this little dog. But she's lying back down in the sun again. She's fine. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, just a couple of announcements. One is that tomorrow, Friday, uh, our Noontime Reflection will be on, on our YouTube channel. Uh, it won't be me. It will be one of our elders, Geraldine Easter, will be uh, speaking. On Saturday, uh, we will not be having a Noontime Reflection at all. There will be none on Saturday. But on Sunday, please join us for our Sunday morning service at 11 o'clock on YouTube. So 11 o'clock on Sunday. Don't miss that. Also, just to mention that our next Kid Zone um, will be released on Saturday morning as well. Uh, that is for boys, girls, families, full of Bible stories, quizzes, fun things. Just a very short, kind of 15 minute slot. So that's the latest one on Saturday. I think that is all we're going to say. So hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. And until I see you again, be blessed.